Hello everyone, this is Mr. Trio, and this is the second video for our Depth Studies B, Germany, 1918-1945. This video will focus on the second topic of why was Hitler able to dominate Germany by 1934. One of the big ideas that I'd like you to think about is that when the Nazi party comes to, begins to form, right after World War I, most people think of them as an extremist group, uh, a fringe group, a group that's laughable. But by 1934, this is a group that is able to essentially take complete control of the government. So this particular presentation focuses on how the Nazi party, specifically under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, goes from a small group of individuals to controlling the entire nation. Here are the four focus points that we will look at. What did the Nazi party stand for in the 1920s? Why did the Nazis have little success before 1930? Why was Hitler able to become chancellor by 1933? And how did Hitler consolidate his power in 1933-1934? So let's have a short timeline to talk about the Nazi party. As I mentioned, they are formed shortly after the First World War and many of the individuals are veterans of the war. Adolf Hitler joins the party in 1919, and because of his unique skills, specifically as a good speaker, he really starts to take on a lot of responsibilities in the party. By 1921, Adolf Hitler takes leadership of the Nazi party. In 1921 also, he establishes what is known as the SA, or stormtroopers. They were commonly referred to on the street as brown shirts, because that was the uniform that they wore. Essentially, they are the muscle for the Nazi party. And we'll see how the SA is very effective in many different ways during the 1920s. And then, finally, in 1923, the Nazi party unsuccessfully tries to seize power in the Beer Hall or Mun um, Munich Pushed. Sorry, sometimes my German isn't the best. It's Munich Pushed. So that's our short timeline to get us started. So let's take a look at our big ideas. Nazi party is first and foremost a party that is based on hate and blaming others for why Germany was in the condition that it was. The Nazi party comes to prominence mainly through the fact that Germany suffers from a poor economy. And when people suffer in a poor economy, they look to more extreme solutions to fix those problems. We're going to talk about coalition government again and how coalition government in this concept essentially helps Hitler become chancellor. And then, last but not least, we're going to return to an idea from our first video, which is about emergency powers. So what did the Nazi party stand for in the 1920s? It's important to note that what they believe in at the beginning doesn't change throughout their entirety. At the root of the Nazi party, they were based on four main ideas. The first being anti-Semitism, hatred of the Jewish people. They were strongly nationalistic and also extremely anti-communist. Last but not least, and this gets into the blame part of their philosophy, they hated the Treaty of Versailles and everything that it stood for. And the Nazi party was able to get a lot of people to support it because 
they were able to show that they could get rid of different parts of the treaty to make Germany better. Let's look at a topic sentence. The Nazi party was founded on four core beliefs, anti-Semitism, nationalism, anti-communism, and the hatred for the Treaty of Versailles. These four core beliefs would not change throughout their years in power. So let's take a look at the Munich pushed. One thing that you may know is that Germany, especially the Bavarian area of um, Germany, is well known for its beer houses. And this is especially true in October when there is a lot of celebrations. The Nazi party essentially tries to take over the government by encouraging people that were gathering at a large beer hall. And essentially, the most important thing is, is that they completely fail. Hitler is arrested, he's put into jail, and essentially, the Nazi party is banned. The thing that is perhaps important about this early attempt is that this failed attempt really brought Hitler to German attention. And because of the trial and his imprisonment, uh, essentially he became sort of a household name. The other thing that was important about this particular failure is that it gave Hitler an opportunity to write his seminal book, Mein Kampf, which means my struggle. And essentially in this book, he lays out what he believes, anti-Semitism, his hatred for the Treaty of Versailles, and he makes an argument to the German people why he should be in charge. The sale of this book in particular is one of the reasons why the Nazi party gains a lot of money in the early years, in that the sale of the book is very popular. So the book was a very important part of how the Nazis were able to grow from a small group. Let's take a look at this topic sentence. The failure of the Munich push showed the Nazi party that power could not be taken by force. The Nazi party would retool their tactics to gain power through legal constitutional means. Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, helped to spread the Nazi party message and fund Nazi events. So in other words, even though they weren't successful, the Nazi party learned from this failure and how they could advance in the future. The second focus point is why did the Nazis have little success before 1930? If you remember from our first video, this was a time where Germany was getting loans from the United States, factories were reopening, and there was a lot of optimism in Germany. Between May 1924 and May 1928, the number of representatives of the Nazi party in the Reichstag actually begins to fall. And there's a direct correlation between this and how well the economy is doing. Let's take a look at our topic sentence. The Nazi party was still seen it, the Nazi party was still seen as a fringe political party in the 1920s. The improving comedy, economy helped to keep the extremists and their populist message from taking hold with German voters. And when I say populist, I mean a message which is directed towards common everyday people. Focus point number three. Why was Hitler able to become chancellor by 1933? First and foremost, as we know, the worldwide depression did not only affect the United States, but essentially all the world. When the economy started going down in Germany, this helped to show that the Nazi party could possibly turn that around. Let's look at our topic sentence. The worldwide depression brought unemployment, homelessness, and poverty to Germany. 
these hardships helped to make the politics of Nazism and communism more appealing. Nazis and communists both won seats in the Reichstag during this time period. Now, in 1932, Germany holds a presidential election. The man on the left is Paul von Hindenburg. He was an important hero of the First World War, and his opponent in the presidential election is Adolf Hitler, who was a corporal during the First World War. So, essentially, the people of Germany had a very clear decision. Hindenburg represented a moderate view, well-known individual. Hitler represented an extremist, perhaps a risky choice to have as president. And when the election results came in, it was Hindenburg that won. But our story doesn't really end there. Let's look at our topic sentence. The 1932 presidential election pitted Paul von Hindenburg against Adolf Hitler. The Nazi took advantage of several modern inventions like the airplane and the radio to help spread his message. In the end, Hindenburg, a war hero, won the election. But once again, it's through this failure that Hitler actually begins to learn some things. And one of the important uh, things that we'll talk about a little bit later is that he understands how mass media through the radio and later through film is an important way to get his message to the people. The reference to the airplane is that Hitler had his own plane and would fly from city to city during this presidential election and was really able to captivate the public attention by flying into town, giving a speech, and then flying off. At the end of this presentation, there's a short video which actually shows some of these campaign rallies that he makes. I hope that you have a little time to take a look at some of that. The last um, issue for this focus point goes back to our discussion of coalition government. Essentially, Hitler loses the presidential election. But because the Nazis were growing in the Reichstag, and they were the largest party in the Reichstag, they essentially had a way to stop government, to block government. So it was a man by the name of Franz von Papen who convinces President Hindenburg that he should appoint Hitler as chancellor. And through this method, he could essentially get Hitler to then take responsibility for running of the government, and he could help um, rally members of the Nazi party um, to get legislation passed get things done. So on the surface, it seems that this was a really good idea. Let's take a look at our topic sentence. The Nazis had lost the election, but still had the largest group of members in the Reichstag. Franz von Papen convinced Hindenburg to appoint Hitler chancellor in order to form a stable coalition. The Nazis had now come to power through legal and constitutional means. So in other words, they learned early that they just couldn't take power through force, through something like the Munich pushed, but instead worked hard and used the system of the Weimar government in order to get where they wanted to go. Last but not least, focus point number four, how did Hitler consolidate his powers in 1933-1934. One of the most important events is the fire that burns down the government building. This fire possibly may have been started by the Nazis as a uh, diversion. 
But unfortunately, at the time, uh, many people believed that the fire was started by a communist. And it was because of this that the Nazis were able to convince the president, Hindenburg, that emergency measures had to be made in order to keep Germany safe. Let's take a look at our topic sentence. The Reichstag building burned down in February 1933. A communist was blamed for the damage. This gave proof that the communists were a threat and Hitler persuaded Hindenburg to use emergency powers to suspend personal freedoms and increase police powers. One of the important aspects of this is what is known as the Enabling Act. Topic sentence. Members of the Reichstag were threatened to vote for the Enabling Act of March of 1933 that allowed Hitler to form a legal dictatorship. The Nazis now controlled the government. When I say that they were threatened, there are cases in which members of the Reichstag were actually uh, threatened by force if they didn't vote for this. When we look at when a democratic nation becomes a dictatorship, it's important to see how it's not something that happens immediately, but it takes step by step incremental changes. And I believe that these are sort of the five most important that take place between April 1933 and July of 1933 that take the democratic Weimar government to a dictatorship. Nazis are put in governor positions in each of the different states of Germany. They begin to institute anti-Semitic laws that um, um, essentially fire all Jews who are working in government. Trade unions are abolished. These are the groups that uh, help protect workers' rights. Um, many of the Nazis did not like trade unions because they sounded and acted a little too communist in their mind. Last um, two, um, all workers had to germ a form, I'm sorry, all factory workers and workers in Germany had to join the German labor front, so essentially become official Nazi party members. And finally, by July, no other political party was allowed other than the Nazi party. Now, Hitler had problems within his own party, and one of the most interesting events is often referred to as the Night of the Long Knives. Re you may remember Hitler forms this group called the SA early on, and at the time it was uh, led essentially by a man named Ernest Rome. Hitler was very paranoid that he was trying to take over the power, and on an evening he was essentially arrested and then killed by the uh, members of the Nazi party. Let's take a look at our topic sentence. The growing power of the SA worried Hitler. Its leader, Ernest Röhm, were was arrested and then shot. Other leaders of the SA were also murdered and complete control of this group was placed under Hitler. So essentially, Hitler takes control of the Weimar government and puts it under his command and then within his own organization eliminates key rivals in order for him to make the Nazi party even stronger. By the time that President Hindenburg dies, essentially Hitler is now completely in charge. Let's take a look at some main ideas for this section. These are the ones that relate directly to our focus points. The Nazi party was formed after World War I 
and was based on hatred for un-German groups like Jews and the hatred for the Treaty of Versailles. The rise and fall of the Nazi party was linked to how well the economy was performing. Though the Nazis lost the 1932 presidential election, he was named chancellor in order to form a stable coalition government. Once Hitler was in office, he made incremental changes in the government in order for him to take full control. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching our video. And as I mentioned, if you go to our Google Classroom site, at the end of this particular presentation, there is first a video of the 1932 Probably presidential the election. Seven days. Here's the airplane. Were fought in one single year. And then this is a TED Talk, which is very worth watching, that helps to consolidate some of the ideas that we had. How did Adolf Hitler, a tyrant who orchestrated one of the largest genocides in... All right. So thanks so much for watching. And let me know if you have any questions.